Well, we are digging in this morning to learn more about growing beautiful flowers here in our area. We want to welcome back Jennifer Chisholm of Harvey Family Farm. It is always good to have you back on the show. Thanks, Amy. Good to be here. You bring such beautiful flowers. You just go out and cut away, don't you? I do. I cut a huge bucket before I come and have a great time. They're beautiful and they're Thank so you. fun. We were feeling them earlier. The textures yeah. of all of these different flowers are so different. We grow a wide range of different flowers starting really early. Um, I have flowers that start actually in March and we'll go all the way through to the first of November oh. when our, whenever our frost happens. And the beautiful fall flowers that we have on the horizon. Yeah. Well, today we want to talk about USDA growing zones and you were telling me there's yes. been some changes. Yeah, so just a few months ago, the USDA changed the growing zone and pretty much everybody in the US went I guess you would say down a zone. So we used to be 6B. So the, the higher um, in the country you go, the lower the number. So we used to be 6B slash 7A. So where we're in the mountains, we have a little bit of both. Uh -huh. But now they've changed it to where everything is, is either 7A or even 7B. So really, if you're growing in our area, check your specific location online and you can find out which of those you are. And why is that so important, Jennifer? Okay, so a lot of times people think that that tells you when to plant. It doesn't. It only tells us what's gonna overwinter. So for example, um, I've got a few dianthus here and I've got some straw flower here. Some of the flowers that we grow on our farm, we actually plant them this fall. So I'm starting seeds now to come out in the spring. Oh, wow. Yeah, to have, to have flowers really early in the spring. So our growing zone tells us, if you look on the back of your packet or you look online, it tells us how cold your winter gets, basically, and what can survive the winter. And what you need to be doing now in order to have those beautiful flowers months and months yes. away. And then also when we're harvesting cut flowers, you say it's yes. a little bit different. Okay, so when we want to harvest a cut flower, you want to think about maybe 12 to 18 inches. That's what makes a cut flower, something that you want to have in a big bouquet, a tall bouquet. The best thing to remember is to cut right above the stem. Um, I'm sorry, right above the leaf. This is called the leaf node. And this is true for all of our flowers. You want to cut right above the leaf node and that actually signals the plant to grow more flowers. A lot of our flowers are cut and come again. Uh -huh. And so you can, you can cut them off and the plant gets a hormone signal that says, hey, we need a lot more flowers. So then it'll regrow what you've... Yeah, it'll grow a lot more. And then I have this right here. This is called a gumfrina, and this is one of the ones that we were really enjoying the texture, the little oh yeah squishy they ball there. They look like there. little raspberries on there, just all white in color. Yeah, and I cut this one extra long so that I could show you. If you have a plant that creates like a W, if you will cut the center one, mm -hmm. then that also signals the plant to grow more. So then these side shoots will grow a lot more. Oh wow. But also the best thing I can tell you, if you've got a cutting garden at home, cut it. Don't just leave them out in the field because they won't regenerate. If you cut them and bring them in, the, in your house, the plants will just keep producing more flowers. And oh, beautiful, right? Yeah. I mean, that's less work for us and we yes. get it to enjoy it even more. And we're almost out of time, but I want, tell us about these. I yes. love these, these are so cool. These are coxcomb celosia. And right now these are in full bloom at the farm. When you drive toward the farm, you will see this vibrant pink collection of flowers. They're great oh fun. Gosh, they're beautiful. So it's like this one right in here, these little ones with the This flies. is all, yeah, this one is all the same as what you've got in your hand. Oh my goodness, look how pretty. Aren't they and beautiful? you've got an event tonight that it's not we, too late. We do. The Tri-Cities Women's Collective is a group. It's got a Facebook group and you can, you can find it there. But they are coming out to the farm. And if you're a woman, you are invited to come out to the farm and just enjoy and meet other local women who, and make friendships. And there is that information. It is happening tonight from 6 to 8. She also has lots of other You Pick events. You can find out more by visiting their website, harveyfamilyfarm.com, located right here in Johnson City.